Hey guys, what is going on? This is WrestleMania back with another episode. Jimmy Uso returned at Bad Blood, so what will this mean for Solo Sokoa and his bloodline? Join us now as WrestleMania looks at the 11th October edition of the Blue Brand and the wildest wrestling news stories you need to know, including WWE content on Peacock heading to Netflix? Did WWE nearly stop Drew vs. Punk match at Bad Blood? Cody Rhodes crushing it at the box office, another superstar signs Legends deal, and more. As always, we won't recap the matches, but look at the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. A predictable but entertaining main event. Solo Sokoa vs. Jimmy Uso was a very predictable but still entertaining main event. While nobody thought Jimmy was going to defeat Solo or that the bloodline wouldn't interfere, everyone involved did their part to make the match main event worthy. Good build for the Motor City Machine Guns. The build up for the Motor City Machine Guns has been superb, and this week was no different as Nick Aldis hinted at big things to come from his latest acquisition, including the team getting a tag title shot. With any luck, WWE will give the guns a good push to match the hype leading up to their arrival. Nick Aldis, always good. Speaking of SmackDown's general manager, Nick Aldis continues to raise the bar of general managers. He's authoritative, as opposed to the weak need Adam Pearce. He's not afraid to inject humor into his segments, such as joking about Randy Orton being the voice of reason, and he always seems to be on top of things. Surprise appearance by Rhea and Liv. Liv Morgan, Rhea Ripley, Dominic Mysterio, and Raquel Rodriguez's surprise appearance was just what SmackDown needed to add some excitement to the predictable Naomi vs. Nia Jax match. It built up Liv Morgan and Nia Jax's upcoming Crown Jewel match and also continued Ripley's new program with Raquel quite a lot in one segment. Fresh opponents for Bianca and Jade. Finally, some fresh competition in the women's tag team division. While no one expected NXT superstars Meta 4, Lash Legend, and Jakara Jackson to defeat WWE Women's Tag Team Champions Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill, it was good to see a new team battle the champions, and it makes sense since NXT lacks a women's tag championship. We need help. Jimmy Uso's return at Bad Blood helped Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes defeat Jacob Fatu and Solo Sokoa, but tonight's outing between Solo and Jimmy confirmed what Jimmy told Roman, we need help. That's obvious, but the suspense and drama lies in who Roman will enlist to help and, equally important, who wants to help the man who ran roughshod on the WWE for the past three years. Who will help Roman and Jimmy? The Bad Tiffany Stratton needs to ditch Nia Jax Albatross. It's time for WWE to either finish the Tiffany Stratton Nia Jax storyline or give him his Money in the Bank a side program to keep her busy while she waits to cash in her briefcase. Tiffany is too talented to be playing Nia Jax's sidekick and the pairing is doing nothing for either woman. WWE not using LA Knight correctly. Why has LA Knight become a supporting player after winning the United States Championship? Knight, who's off the charts charisma and excellent work in the ring, wowed over fans quickly, all but forcing WWE to book him against Roman Reigns last year at Crown Jewel. While a world title run wasn't in the cards, WWE used LA as a featured player, leading to his huge United States Championship win over Logan Paul at SummerSlam. Now Knight is nothing but someone who wrestlers talk about challenging, but who seems to have no other purpose. Knight needs a solid feud so WWE can take advantage of his popularity. The Downright Ugly Nothing ugly. SmackDown was a good follow-up to Bad Blood as the WWE followed up on Jimmy Uso's return and Kevin Owens' heel turn. It also started the build towards Crown Jewel by bringing in Raw's Judgment Day and Rhea Ripley to hype the inner brand women's match. WWE leaving Peacock for Netflix? Topping today's news is a report that the WWE content currently on Peacock will move over to Netflix when the Peacock deal ends in 2026. The latest Wrestling Observer Newsletter reports, This is far from a done deal, but we do know that within Peacock, there is a feeling that in early 2026, when the WWE streaming contract expires, that WWE will move everything to Netflix. There is a lot that goes into this as WWE as a public company will be looking for the best offer. The report noted that Netflix has the rights to WWE's content, TV and former WWE Network content, for broadcasting outside the United States, so it makes sense for Netflix to acquire everything. Naturally, the WWE will want the best deal possible, thus another streaming service could land the rights. The Observer report noted that Netflix might have landed the rights to NXT and SmackDown if it had moved earlier when it acquired Raw. Did WWE almost stop the Punk vs. McIntyre match? 
Did WWE almost stop the CM Punk vs Drew McIntyre Hell in a Cell match? The spot where Punk accidentally busted Drew's head open with a metal table leg is still being talked about, and a new report from the Wrestling Observer's Dave Meltzer indicates WWE officials were concerned about Drew's condition. Backstage and at ringside they were panicking because of how bad the wound was and that he was so bloody and it wouldn't stop. They had first talked about having the doctor get in the cage and trying to stop the bleeding, but the decision was made not to do it because it was hell in a cell. The WWE was forced to pause WrestleMania 39's Edge vs Finn Balor Hell in a Cell match after Edge threw a chair at Balor and busted him open the hard way. Balor's wound was attended to, so it's unclear why WWE was hesitant to do so. Hopefully the talk of not doing so because it was a Cell match was hyperbole, as one would hope WWE cares more about its superstars than a match's reputation. Meltzer discussed how WWE and McIntyre handled the situation. They wanted to wipe the blood off him with a towel. McIntyre basically took control and said that if he felt woozy, he would give them the word and they would go right to the finish. While he took a hard shot, he showed no signs of a concussion, they proceeded as planned with no issues, and he was very aware of what was going on and in control at all times. Drew McIntyre is known for giving it his all when he steps into the ring, and he's worked through significant injuries and even a bout with the flu. Thus, it's unclear whether Drew would have told officials to finish the match. Whatever the case, it's good that no one suffered any serious injuries, and hopefully the WWE will take a closer look at dealing with similar situations down the road. How over is Cody Rhodes? Just how successful has Cody Rhodes been in the WWE since winning the WWE Undisputed Championship at WrestleMania 40? While it's known that the American Nightmare is often at the top of WWE's merchandise list and reportedly a top seller overall for fanatics, a new report from Dave Meltzer shows just how much of a draw Cody is. Since becoming champion, Rhodes headlined shows that set gate records for the city in 32 of his 35 main events. What do you think of Cody's accomplishments, and do you think WWE made the right decision to anoint him as their top performer? Let us know in the comments below. Is Tony Khan punishing the Lucha Bros? Is Tony Khan punishing the Lucha Brothers, Ray Phoenix, and Penta El Cero by adding more time to their contracts due to time missed while they were injured? Wrestling purists Ibu recently discussed the situation, speculating on why Khan didn't let one or both brothers leave for WWE. People other than Tony Khan don't have strong feelings on the situation. As for Tony, Tony likes Ray Phoenix. He's always liked and respected Ray Phoenix. He just felt that if he let this thing slide, that other people were going to start taking advantage of him and it was going to lead to a dam breaking. Fans have heard of wrestlers like Miro requesting their releases, which only adds to AEW president Tony Khan's headaches. Ibu added, So they're fucked, and Penta has another month, I believe, and Phoenix has 9 to 10. Tony found out what the plan was for them on SmackDown, by the way, and that also informed this. Take a wild guess who leaked that one backstage in AEW. It's unknown whether Penta will leave for WWE or wait for his brother to join. Details on Daniel Garcia signing with AEW. Daniel Garcia has signed a new deal with AEW, but why? The WWE was reportedly very interested in signing the 26-year-old star, and given WWE's incredible success and AEW's recent woes, some fans thought the WWE was the better choice. However, it appears AEW may have backed up the Brinks truck for Garcia, as Dave Meltzer is reporting in the latest Wrestling Observer Newsletter that Garcia announced his new deal. On Dynamite, and Khan, when asked about it, said they were closing negotiations over the weekend. The way he explained it on air, and Khan as well, was that it was a hard decision. Those in WWE said more than a month back that the AEW deal was significantly higher, and they expected he would take it. AEW has shown it's willing to pony up the dough for signing talent, and fans should expect more signings now that the company has extra money from its new rights deal with Warner Brothers Discovery. The only question now is whether AEW can stabilize its ratings and rebuild its audience. Longtime writer leaves AEW. Longtime writer and wrestler Jimmy Jacobs has left AEW. Fightful Select reports that Jacobs, who has been with AEW since 2019, was burnt out and decided to leave. The report also said that AEW is looking at Jacobs' departure as a way to freshen up the writer's room. The departure was said to be on good terms, and it's unknown what's next for Jacobs. Another former superstar signs Legends deal. Last but not least, good news for Dylan Postal, aka former WWE star Hornswoggle, who's recently announced he's signed a Legends deal with the WWE. Dylan was at an ACW Wisconsin show when he dropped the news. This is the latest Legends deal, as Diamond Dallas Page announced he'd signed a similar contract with WWE after his experience at Bad Blood. Well guys, there you have it, WrestleMania's look at the 11th October edition of SmackDown, as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know in wrestling. Be sure to leave your comments, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll see you next time for some more...
wrestling content.